Right, so. My pleasure, Terry. You help me, I help you. That has always been my philosophy in life. Never let me down. The rest of the people in this world behave that... What's the matter? You've only given me a bleeding lift. A favour sowed is a favour reaped, Terry. Oh, good. I'm getting out before you start the hymns. Who's that, then? How do I know? See you later. Up to Winchester. Yeah. And don't forget that job. Oh, all right. Ta-da. Ta-da. Tell him I can, mister. Yeah, that's right. Who are you? Peter Sharp. My mum told me to give you this. What is it? It's a letter. I can't see that. What's it about? Don't know. My mum didn't say. We'll better have a look, then, eh? Hmm. Where's your mum now? Don't know. Where's your dad? Don't know. My mum said you and your uncle Terry. We'd better go in, then, eh? Come on in. Here you go. You can bang your stuff in there for the time being. What'd you say your name was again? Peter Sharp. And your mum's Beryl. Listen, I'm... I'm going to have a cup of tea. Feel that one? I don't mind, sir. Well, go on, sit down. Make yourself comfortable. How did your mum know where I live? Don't know. How did you get down here, exactly? From train from Warrington, my mum brought me. But why didn't she wait to say hello? Don't know. She said she had to go and see her mate. Who's that? Mary. She's an old mate of my mum's, so my mum says. I bet you don't know where she lives either, do you? My mum didn't say. Again. I do, kid. Come in, love, and tell us all about it. You hungry? No, it's all right. Listen, if you're hungry, say so. Well, I wouldn't mind a butter, please. Butter? Aye, please. If that's all right. That's a sandwich, isn't it? Yeah, hold up. I think I can rustle that up. Well, I've got at the moment. That do. It's our uncle, Teddy. How old are you, Pete? We're nine last month. Yeah? You always lived in Warrington? Aye, but you must know that, being my uncle and everything. Oh, uh, well, yeah, I haven't been in touch with your mum for a long time. You know, I thought you might have moved or something. No, we've always lived in Warrington. This is the first time I've been out of it. Your, uh, your dad still at home, is he? He weren't at home when we left. So he definitely doesn't know you're down here? My mum didn't say. Good, good. You're not going to stand for that, are you, Terence? I already have. He's there, isn't he? <laughs> Him a father. Can you imagine? <laughs> Something wrong with that notion, is there? It's ridiculous. No, 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 Terry. I mean, you're a father. It's not natural. Am I some kind of freak or something? No, 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 but I'm, I'm referring to your erratic lifestyle, your total lack of ambition, your cavalier attitude to matters domestic. It don't exactly make you odds-on favourite for the fatherhood stakes, do it? 
Look, that kid has not been out of black pudding land. And correct me if I'm wrong, you have never been north of Barnet. There is no way you could have signed it. I mean, apart from everything else. Everything else what? You tell him, will you? Tell him. It's some loony bird trying a con. Am I right or am I wrong? You got to admit it smelling a bit tall. Long lost kid, nine years out of your past. Got to be a bit dodgy, ain't it? See? It's not possible. Listen, when I was fighting, I did go into that manor, right? And for a couple of days, I had a thing with a bird up there. Do you know what her name was? Beryl. How long was you up there? Well, it's like I said, a few days. There you go, then. Bird like that lets you do the business as soon as you meet. Next day, someone else. I tell you, Terry, you're standing with a three-card trick. All I'm saying is it is possible, right? Well, where's the kid now? At home watching telly. You see what I mean? He's only had the kid a few hours. He's already leaving it on his own. Oh, you're great, aren't you? I thought it would help talking to somebody. Of course it would, Terry. Of course it would. And who better to talk to than your two close friends, Dave and myself? Look, take the advice of wiser heads than yours. Dump him. Dump him? I don't mean dump him in the river, do I? Send him down to welfare. They have people who deal with that sort of thing. Wet Liberal Brigade. Love it, don't they? Yeah, how can't she tell us the kid you're his uncle? But tell you, you're really the kid's old man. Well, he thinks someone else is his dad, doesn't he? I suppose if he learnt you as his dad, it would upset him. <laughs> I mean, uh, discovery, like. Upset any kid, wouldn't it? Yeah, well, it don't matter who his dad is. I'm lumbered with him, right? No, well, you're not. Not if you do what I say. No, oh, I can't do that. Why not? Well, you've got to feel a bit sorry for him, haven't you? I told you when she ran, we're not having that kid here as well. I know, and she knows, but you've seen the state she's in. We've only got one bedroom, for Christ's sake. Keep your voice down. Look, I don't mind her staying for a few days until she finds a place. And how the bloody hell is she supposed to find somewhere to live in this bloody town in a few days? Is my dinner ready? No, it bloody isn't. Come on, love. Let's get this case unpacked. What do you mean you can't? You've already left him alone. So what's a few hours this evening? Look, I'm not going to get out of that boozer till after midnight. Well, you can watch the late night movie on TV. Oh, that's lovely, isn't it? You were the one who was having a go at me about leaving him before. No, 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 I wasn't. I was simply pointing out to you your unsuitability in the role of Pater Familius. Pater what? And look, I promised the man you'd be there, and you promised me. Well, to be fair, I mean, I've got my reputation for reliability to consider. Oh, I can't just leave him alone in a strange flat. Strange? Well, I would say it was strange. Modest. Oh, come strange. on, you know what I'm talking about. And what about. about the money? You've got to earn, haven't you? If you are bent on being a family man, you have got to provide for your dependents, Terry. That All is a harsh reality. All right. You can lend us a few, Bob. I only wish I could, Terry. I only wish I could. But I've got a slight cash flow problem at the moment. Uh, I tell you what, take him with you. He's nine. Yeah, well, I'll have a word with the governor. He can stick him somewhere near the office. He'll enjoy it. All that music and excitement. All right, all right. But you better give us a sub. I've got to get course, some groceries. Of course, of course, of course. Would I see you without... There you go. And now you've got some money, you can buy me a drink. Been all right? Aye, uh, thanks, Uncle Terry. Yeah, I've got some grub for you. You must be starving. Don't mind frozen, do you? I like it better warmed up. Got any crisps? Can Uncle Teddy? You all right? Aye, uh, it's a bit noisy though, isn't it? Yeah. You have boozers like this up your end, don't you? Eh? Uh, uh, pubs with music and dancing, all that. I don't really like pubs. Your dad goes to pubs. Oh. Are we going to be here much longer, Uncle Teddy? Well, it's like I was trying to explain to you earlier. It's the sort of job, you see. That's what I do. 
All I see you do is stand around. Funny job, innit? Yeah, well... Well, when you grow up, you'll find out that some people have to do funny jobs. I have to do this. See, I make sure all these people behave themselves. Like a policeman? No. Well, sort of, in a way, yeah. <laughs> Terry! Listen, I've got to go and mingle for a bit. Will you be all right? For a moment, you hadn't shown. Is that what you're doing here, checking up on me? No, no. No, no, I know you wouldn't let me down. No, I come to get your fee. Make sure you didn't get striped, you know. Oh, yeah, I know. <laughs> Is that him? Yeah, that's him, yeah. Don't look much like you, do he? Oh, go on, tell him who I am. Peter, this is a friend of mine, Arthur. Hello, Pete. Hello. Peter. You look a bright young lad. Terry's been telling me all about you. Ain't you, Terry? Your mother been having a bit of a lark, has she? A bit of a girl, your mum. Me, yeah. ma'am. Me, ma'am. Oh, oh, your mum. <laughs> What's it all about, Peter? Uh, Peter, you stay there for a minute, eh? A word in your shell, like. Ooh, very sistine. Now listen, just turn it in. Turn what in? Oh, come on, Arthur, you know what I'm talking about. I was just trying to be nice to the little lad. Is there something wrong with that? Yeah, just leave it out, all right? No questions. Look, Terry, what has got into you? You're not seriously considering keeping hold of the kid, are you? Well, until I sort it out, yes. Sort it out? What, you mean find his mother? I suppose so. Terence, Terence, you are a minder, not a bloody detective. Look, she's lobbed the kid at you and done the offman. She's some kind of crank. Now, look, just let me ask the lad a few questions. Now, remember, I have children of my own. I know how the young mind works. No, thanks a lot, but I'll sort it out my way. If it's all the same to you, all right? Just, just trying to help a friend in need. If that is your attitude. It is. See you later. Right. Oh, this fell in love. I mean, people change in nine years. No. Teddy was a nice lad. I know he'll understand. Still an old love. No, but I mean, all of a dither. Didn't know what else to do. You could have brought him here. Well, at least you can give him a ring. You've got the number, haven't you? Oh, yeah. Well, go on, then. Yeah, but what if Teddy answers? You don't have to tell him where you are or anything. Just ask if Peter's all right and say you'll see him as soon as you can. Do you think, do you think I should? Yes, I do. No answer. No. Well, perhaps it's taken to the pictures or something. Rocking out on super sounds, boys and girls. So don't get strung over or hung over. Just hang loose on your back. No, I'm Terry. Get a match. Well, I'm the time, boy. You're on. Come near the match. Do the cheerio from your happy jug in the dump. Watch it, stupid. It were you who bumped into me. Oh, it were you who bumped into me. You cheeky little bastard. Who do you reckon his tailor is? Sainsbury's, isn't it? At least I don't wear earring. Only girls wear earring. Mouthy little bleeder. I'll give you a slap. You slap anyone, try me. You all right, Peter? Hi, Uncle Terry. What's this big Uncle Terry coming to the rescue? Shut your mouth, Sonny, or I'll squeeze all your pimples. All right, now on your bike, both of you. Now, listen, I told you... Wonder if, if that kid will grow up to be as big a pillock as his uncle.
Do you think you should have found again? Yeah, I suppose I should. Just to reassure yourself, you know. Yeah, I will. About Ronnie Beryl. What? You don't think you'll find out where you've come, do you? Oh, I don't see how he could. You'll never think I'd come to London, anyway. He's found you before. Come on in. Wakey, wakey, come and get it. Come on, I'll get cold. Oh, put a pair of strides on, eh? Strides? Trousers. Yeah, and bung your shirt on and all. You can wash and change later if you want. Well, come on, then. I am called Teddy. Selfishness. Selfishness and ingratitude. Oh, lumbered with your lumber, eh? <laughs> Terrible thing. You know what he said when I phoned him? No, and well, I'm sure you're going to tell me. Ump it yourself. The exercise will do you good. Bloody ingrate. Yeah, well, uh, help is hard to find these days. Twenty, forty, sixty, uh, two sixty. There you go, Arthur. And thanks. Ah, oh, favour sown, Dave. Favour sown. I only wish a certain person would appreciate that. You can hardly have a kid tagging along on your shifting suspect parcels. Suspect? There's nothing suspect about this little lot. I told you the geezer got it in lieu of a bad debt. I know what you told me, Arthur. And your word is bonded. Right. Hello? Hello, Terry. Is that you? Yeah, who's that? It, 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 it's Beryl. P Peter's mum. Is he all right? Oh, yeah. It's wonderful. Yeah, he's all right. Listen, hadn't we better have a chat about this? Um... Oh, no. <laughs> Sorry, Terry, I can't. <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> Son it. That was your mum. Your yeah, mum? What did she say? Not a lot. Is she coming for me? Did she say Uncle Teddy? Well, no, not exactly. Not, not just yet. She asked after you, you know, see how you were and all that. Aye. Yeah, I'll tell you what. Should we go out somewhere? Where? Well, I don't know. <laughs> we're thinking something. Arthur, hang on a minute. Listen, Arthur, I told you I'm busy today. So what am I, contagious all of a sudden? I can't pay a friendly visit? And I'm not umping any dodgy booze about, either. Dodgy booze? You're beginning to sound like Dave. No, 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 that's all, all done and delivered. So what do you want, then? What? I don't want anything. Oh, come on. You don't make social visits. Hey, 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 hey. Look, I told you, I came round for nothing but a friendly call. But, since you bring it up... Oh, here we go. I had a bell from the geezer who runs the disco boozer you were working last night. He told me about that little to-do you had. And? Very impressed. Very impressed in... Oh, by the way, your uh, your wages. There we are. Bless that sub. And he wants to know whether you like to do it regular. No way. Unless you're a manager, so to speak, I said yes. No. I mean, it doesn't have to be on a permanent basis, but I didn't let him know that. See, I thought until things pick up, it'd be bread and butter money. No, Arthur. So what'd you say? No, N-O. Look, don't be evasive. I've got to tell the geezer one way or the other. Look, I told you when you rang, right? I'm not leaving him alone anymore. Not until I sort it out. And I'm certainly not taking him back to that boozer, not after last night's turnout. You are being very silly, Terence. Very silly indeed, holding on to him like that. Look, how do you know you're not letting yourself in for some sort of abduction charges? I do leave off. And where are you going to start looking for this mother of his? She phoned up a little while ago. Maybe she called back. Oh, she rang and didn't declare where she is. She sounded a bit upset. She's upset. I'm upset about your stupidity. I mean, it's not as if there's anything in it for us. What do you reckon, then? Uh, it's good, in it? Well, been a few people dubbed up in there. What's the mean, dubbed up? Well, tucked up, you know, uh, locked in prison. Look, there's Traitor's Gate. While she was still princess, Queen Elizabeth I was imprisoned in Bell Tower by Queen Mary. She sat on steps to Traitor's Gate. It was raining, but she sat on steps and refused to budge. 
Is that a fact? Aye, there's ravens in town, you know. Oh, yeah, yeah, lots of them. They've always been there since the tower were built over 900 years ago. There's a legend says the tower will crumble if they ever leave, but they've got wings clipped, so it's unlikely, isn't it? Well, absolutely, yeah. <laughs> Great, innit? Yeah, it's all right, innit? Listen, if you've never been out of Warrington, how come you know so much about all this? My favourite subject at school, English history, especially London, because it's where most of it were made. Look! Listen, about your dad. Might sound silly, but I've never met him, you see. I mean, I haven't seen your mum for years, either. You used to have bear baiting over there. Plink Prison were close by, where bishops of Winchester used to keep their prisoners. It were burnt down by rioters 200 years ago. Pity they can't do the same with ones with the scrubs. Eh? <laughs> huh? Nothing. Listen, what's your dad's name? Ronnie. You all right, is he? He hits me now. Does he hit you? Aye, sometimes. Is that why you and your mum come down here? Cos he knocks you about? He and my mum had a fight night before. You mustn't take too much notice of Bob, love. He's never really got off the shock of losing our Billy. And he just gets upset when kids are about. Especially as your Peter would be near the same age as our Billy would have been. It's all right, Mary, don't go on about it. It's not that he doesn't like kids. It's just the opposite. You know that there's not a lot of room in the flat. Yeah, yeah. I, I understand, Mary, honest. Well, you know you're welcome to stay as long as you like, love. Yeah. Do you know if your mum's got enough readies? Beddies? <laughs> Has she got enough money? Don't think she's much fares up to London, my dear. Don't oh, you mean down? No, we always say up. Up? Well, it don't really matter, does it? I suppose not. You got any other relations in Warrington? The only grand, she died about two years ago. What makes you say that? Well, my mum's never mentioned you until we was coming up here on train. Well, no, I mean, uh, I'm not a blood relation, but your mum and me, we were, well, very good friends a long time ago. That before I was born? Yeah. Yeah, that was before you were born. We should go out somewhere this evening. Get you out yourself. Do I have to keep calling you Uncle Terry, Uncle Terry? No, just call me Terry. That's more friendly, isn't it? Hello, Beryl. Beryl? Who's Beryl, lover boy? Who's that? Well, that's not very flattering. <laughs> oh, Penny, it's you. Hello. No, no, I was expecting someone else. Yes, I know. Beryl. Yeah, well, it's not another bird. Well, of course, it is a bird, but it's not what you think. Listen, I'm ringing to say I've got a few days' leave. So if you're not otherwise engaged... Yeah, smashing, yeah. The only thing is, there's someone else staying here. A boy. Young boy. Kerry, what are you trying to say? No, no, leave it out. No. He's, um... Well, it's a sort of relation, I suppose. Sort of. Yeah, look, I'll, I'll explain it when you get here, all right? Well, I've got to go home and change first. So, uh, about eight, say? OK, no, fine. ta -da.
trouble is, most of the cheaper priced ones don't want kids. They're a bet sits, but they can be pretty horrible. Look, don't worry about it. I can maybe help you out with some money. Beryl? What? Oh, I'm sorry. I was saying, don't worry about the money. Me and Mary have got a pet pop by. We'll help. No. Oh, it's very kind. I'm very grateful, but you've done enough as it is. Maybe I ought to go back. And have that bloody swine bash you about again. Not bloody likely, me lass. Well, I don't know what I'm going to do. You're staying here till you've sorted yourself out. That's what you're going to do. Now, what about Peter? Do you want to try ringing him again? No, not tonight. He'll only upset me again. He, he, he's all right. Terry said he was. So, what are you going to do? Don't know. Not much I can do, is it? Well, you can hardly keep him with you, now, can you? No, I suppose not. Seems like a nice kid. Yeah, he's all right, Zams. What if his mother doesn't ring again or come round? Oh, I don't know. You have to contact the authorities. Yeah. I know, really? Yeah, I know, I know. I think he really is your son. Well, it's possible, isn't it? I don't think I'd better stay tonight. Why not? Well, no, he's all right. He'd be in the living room asleep on a sofa. No, I don't think I'd better. Oh, come on, Pen. No. What about the noise? Oh, don't make any noise. No, but I do. True. True. Great, haven't had so much fun since my last emergency practice. Well, what? In case of a crash, you know? <laughs> God, where do I get her energy? Oh, it's called youth. We're gonna have to do something, you know. Yeah, I suppose so. Is his home on the phone? Nah, no. Anyway, that'd be nice, wouldn't it? I phone up and a geezer who's supposed to be his father answers. <laughs> nah. Anyway, I think it's him they're both running away from. Oi, Tennis! <laughs> All right, come on, second half. I'm in goal. I'm not playing gay school. Won't be fair. We'll see about that, young man. Come on. I think we got company. Hang on a minute. You been following me or something? Not following. Tracking, Terry. Tracking. Ah. So how come you tracked me down here, then? Well, you weren't at home. No. And I figured you're a near skimp member with a healthy young lad on your hands. Where else could you take him where it wouldn't cost? Very clever. Uh, logic and reason have always been my forty, Terence. How are you? You're what? 
What's, uh, what's Penny doing here? Got a few days leave. Oh, she wasted it doing this. <laughs> All right, then, what do you want? I need help shifting a load. Ah. No, 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 it's not a booze. That's done, I told you. No, it's a cotter of water-damaged umbrellas I've done a trade with. Water-damaged umbrellas? Well, that's what it says on the invoice. Invoice you? <laughs> Imported foreign rubbish. I got it at the lock-up. Came in last night. <laughs> I bet it did, late last night. No, the point is, it's got to be delivered to its new owner today. I've arranged with Des to pick up a transit at the garage. It'll only take you a couple of hours. I'm busy. Oh, yeah. Too busy to pick up 20 sobs for a few hours' collar. Yeah, I'm sorry, mate. Yeah, I promise. Right, 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 right. 30. I'm cutting to my profit margins, but I need someone I can trust. And don't tell me you don't need the dough. You, uh, found his mother yet? No, not yet, no. So, you're still having to feed him. All that costs money, doesn't it? Just as well Penny is here, because she can look after him while you do this job for me. All right, but they're coming with us. Oh, no, Terry. I can't be doing with all that aggro. <laughs> Bloody hell. I didn't know you played. Back it up to the door, Terry. Come on, come on, come on. Hold it! Yeah, just a little storing place. You need to be well stocked up when you're in the buying and selling game. Where on earth does it all come from? Well, bankrupt stock mostly, seconds, that sort of stuff, you know. That it then? Got you. Perhaps little Peter can give you a hand. What's wrong with you? Oh, no chance, Terry, no chance. I'd done my back humping that last load. Compound fracture of vertebrae, I shouldn't wonder. Oh, I shouldn't wonder, yeah. Come on, Peter. Oh, huh? Well, oh, you know me, Terry. Do anything for a few coppers. <laughs> oh, a little bit of schmutter. Factory rejects, mostly, but it moves well in the street markets. I have something over here that will really be of interest to a young lady of your discerning taste. Now, this really is exclusive. A gift. And please don't thank me. Oh, I've seen them selling this in Oxford Street. Yes, I believe one or two of the better-class stores do carry a few bottles. No, no, I mean the street traders with suitcases. You can tell by the shape of the bottle it's not the real thing. <laughs> Can't you make him see reason? Reason? About that kid. It's unnatural. It's unhealthy, even. Why? Why? Yes, why is it unnatural? Yes, well, I mean, the sort of fella Terry is, the kind of life he leads. But he seems to be looking after him pretty well to me. That is not the point, my dear. And apart from everything else, I would guess it's against the law. Really? Well, you don't mean to say you approve? Well, I don't disapprove. But I agree he's got to do something about it. So you'll have a word with him, eh? I already have. But I'll have another try. Good girl, good girl. He, those dresses you were looking at, perhaps we could find one your size. Terry! Manchester, due to arrive at the Tiff, is now approaching the station. I've changed my mind. I don't think this is a good idea. Anyway, I'm not too keen on dwelling in places like this. Won't take long. Oh, hold on, hold on. Listen, what do you think, little man? Well, it's up to you, isn't it? Well, you do want us to find your mum, don't you? You know, I've run away, I share. Well, no, but... We just want to check she's OK. She sounded a bit upset on the phone, you know. Just a precaution. You won't have to leave me, will you? <laughs> no, not if I've got anything to do with it. Come on. 
Won't take long, she says. Only two bleeding hours. Stop moaning, Terry. Takes time to check him. <sighs> Davis said they saw the boy and his mother leaving the day before yesterday, carrying suitcases. Well, we know that. Well, the only thing I can suggest is you take him down to the local social services. They've got a team that will deal with him. We don't want him dealt with. We want to find his mum. Very well, sir. If you'd care to fill out a missing persons form. Thanks, but no thanks. We sorted out ourselves. Come on. Thank you, officer. Not they were. Teddy? My mum's all right, isn't she? Of course she is. We would have heard otherwise. Don't worry, we'll look after you. Well, I don't know you've put up with him all these years. We well, won't like it at first. <laughs> Never are, love. Trouble is, it's getting worse then. I mean, there's hardly a night now when he ain't drunk. And he has these really, you know, violent rages. I thought you were going to do for us this time, I told him. I don't know, it's a mystery to me. I suppose I'm at fault, really. Don't talk about a ridiculous woman. How's it your fault? The man's a show up and his pig and there's an end to it. I mean, it's a mystery to me why so many intelligent women stay with men who constantly bash them about again and again. It's pure bloody masochism. Well, I'm, I'm partly to blame, because of Peter. But why, woman? He doesn't know he didn't father Peter. Oh, no, love. You haven't told him, have you? Some folk don't need to, do they? You mean he just suspects? Ah, he always has. I suppose that's why Zachy is. You must have said some up. No. I suppose it's instinct. I mean, Peter's not like him. I mean, he's such a small lad. One is a big man, is he? Oh, aye. You've never met him, have you? I've got a picture here. I only keep it because it's a nice one of Peter. Here, look. Mm. I see what you mean. There we are, Arthur. On me. Hey, you cheer up. You got him back grafted, ain't you? Yeah, but for how long, Dave? How long? Getting lumber with this kid has softened his brain. I just sort himself out. Yeah. Well, I better get over there and give him his wages. See if there's been any developments in uh, water damaged umbrellas. Right, woman, get your bloody bags back. You're coming back with me. How did you...? Because you're bloody stupid, woman. You forgot to take letters your bloody mate here sent you, didn't you? It didn't take that much working out. Now get them bags and be quick about it. And where's the lad? He's not here. I didn't bloody ask you. I think you'd better leave before I call the police. You can call the bloody hell you like, see if I care. I said, where's the lad? I said, <laughs> where's the lad? What's going on here, then? None of your bloody business, mate, whoever you are. This is my husband. And this is my bloody wife. And this happens to be my own mate, so you'd better calm down. We'll see who should bloody calm down, mate. <laughs> Stop it! Stop it! Leave me alone, you piggy bastard! You piggy. bloody coward! Said, where's the lad? He's... Where you can't hurt him! He's with his real father! 
There you are, and there's plenty more where that came from. No, 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 it's all there, it's all there. Favour sown is a favour oh, reap. Don't start all that again. Hello? Terry? It's Beryl? It's Ronnie. It's coming round to get Peter. What shall I do? Uh, well, what shall hold I do? on, listen. Listen, just try and calm down, eh? Nothing's going to happen to Peter. I'm sorry, Terry. I didn't tell him. He got your name and dress out of my handbag and he, he guessed. What? Don't worry about that now. Just get yourself over here as fast as you can, all right? My friend's husband will bring me in his car. Right. Now, don't worry. Whatever happens, I can handle it, I promise you. I just you keep calm. I'll see you later. Ta-da. That was your mum on the phone. She's on her way over. So's his dad. Someone, Squire? Fine. I'm going to call Terry McKenna. Well, you found him, haven't you? All right. You bastard! Change much? Hello, Terry. I'll get you, you bastard! I think we'd better have a chat. Well, perhaps we'd go inside. Go on. Go on up. I'll be up in a minute. Go on. What I don't understand is, uh, why tell me he's mine if he's not? I don't know. Well, I, I just thought that if... that if you thought it was yours... Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for causing me all this trouble. Do you mean that nutter really is his old man? No, no. No, another bloke. Somebody, uh... Uh, you were married, you see. Oh. I thought you'd be relieved. Well, yeah, I am, of course. He's a nice little boy, isn't he? Hi. What are you going to do now, then? Well, Mary, my mate and her husband, that's him that brought us here. They said I can stay with them <laughs> and Peter till I get a job, you know, and somewhere to live. Listen, if it's difficult, I always stay at my place, you know. I mean, uh, I'll sleep on a sofa, you know. Oh, Terry, no, love. It's lovely of you to offer, but... No. <laughs> I think I've caused you enough trouble, haven't I? Well, you know what? My mate Arthur, he's got friends who've got property. Flats and that. Maybe he could fix you up. <laughs> oh, it ain't worked out too bad, has it? <laughs> Listen, you get any more aggravation, you ring me straight away, all right? Yeah. Yeah, I will. 
and if it's all right, maybe I could, uh, well, maybe I could come and see you, see that you're right, and maybe take Peter out, eh? Oh, why? Uh, oh, I'd like that. Peter would have known, I'm sure. Well, I think I would as well. <laughs> <laughs>